Right, back in the uh, Beverly Hilton. I know. We'll have a great reading. All right, we'll do. I'll be somewhere around this vicinity. All right, see you. See you later. This is really a very highly active place to be. That means that going into this reading, I'm really going to try to have to separate the energy of this place from the actual client and focus on the client as opposed to the location. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm Jenny. Jenny. Oh, good. Hey, Jenny. How are you? Good. Oh my gosh. Thank you oh my for God. having me. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, so nervous. nervous. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I'm Jenny J. Wow Farley. Uh, I was on Jersey Shore, and I know about Tyler through Snooki. As of right now in my life, I don't believe in mediums. Uh, I haven't been proven wrong. I've always said, just prove it to me. Just prove me wrong or say something that's like super accurate that you can't Google. And nobody's been able to do that. So if Tyler proves me wrong, eh, that's a game changer because that's gonna make me a believer. And then, I don't know, for some reason, I might just change my whole outlook on life. I don't even know if you know who I am. Yeah, Jay Wow, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful to meet you. Yes, you too. I'm so happy to be here today. And I really like to explain kind of how this works because it's a bit of a unique thing. As a medium, my job is really to give you a validating experience that ensures that when you leave, you feel like you've made a connection to a loved one. And that's mm -hmm. my job. I'm basically just gonna kind of scribble. And this is my way of just distracting myself, kind of getting in the zone. Um, so sometimes an object will help. Um, I and... brought two. Oh, perfect, okay. Um, I'll hold on to anyone you'd like me to have. Yeah. This guy. Mr. Bobble. I love it. And I look. I brought two objects, a set of rings, and a bobblehead, which kind of looks like Pauly D. But it's not Pauly D. Hmm. That's interesting. They brought two. Okay, kind of have a unique passing I'm going to need to talk about. There's an acknowledgement of basically an individual who did not even get to live to middle age. And the feeling that's coming across is basically, I'm viewing this as a tragedy, something that I'd be viewing as like devastating because of the nature of how old this individual was when they died. Um, but I would I say that. that. Okay. I'm gonna have to channel this as best I can, but when this individual passed, there's a feeling of, I'm looking forward to something. This isn't like a situation where someone's depressed and they have nothing to look forward to. The feeling is, I know that I have all these things that I'm looking forward to do, I'm like planning to do these things, and I just feel like my life gets cut short. To my knowledge, it was an accident. It was an accidental, unexpected death. Right. I just want to mention there's a weird uh, reference to the early July for some reason, and they're having me talk about 4th of July. Um, so it could be a significant... Oh my god, um, he died on July 7th. Thank you. Okay, that would be it. There's a motorcycle ride, and there's a reference to being there during the motorcycle ride, or like the bike ride. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This individual is not only coming through for you, but is interestingly like, connected to your partner. And for some reason, there's a reference of like, I give this person signs too. Like, I'm connected to partner. That's because that's not my friend. It's my husband's. <laughs> yeah. I love that, because it's like, oh, I'm connected yeah. to your partner, your partner. I know you mentioned that this was an accident, but there's a feeling that comes through with this of questions being asked when it comes to the way that this individual is found. And weirdly, I'm still seeing question marks. And so even if we think we kind of know what happened, there's a feeling of there still being some elements of unknown. I think, again, happened was he got a tattoo and couldn't fall asleep, and he took medication and never woke up. So the question being, and I think there you said there was a question with his death, is it's split between suicide and it's split between accidental. And Roger, my husband, 100% believes, and so do all the guys, that it was completely accidental. For him, he just wanted everybody to have closure with this passing because he, first words out of his mouth were, I had a lot to look forward to at the time that I died. Yeah. Those aren't the words of someone who ends their life. I would love for you to call my husband. Oh, interesting. OK, absolutely. Yeah. Because well, I'm ready to call whenever okay. you are. All right, well, let's, let's do it. You sure? OK. okay. Hey. Hey. So you know I said I would call if there was sufficient stuff on our little bobble. I'm just going to let Tyler take it away. Hey there. <laughs> how are you? Hey, how are you? Doing great. Good, I'm, how are you? Doing wonderful. Hey, thank you so much. I, You know, I was sitting here, and I had a lot of information come through, and I'm just going to run it by you. you know, the way okay. that it, it came through really was that his message wasn't even necessarily for Jenny. His message was really for you and acknowledging this aspect of, of just needing it to be known that he has closure. He came through in reference to the fact that he knew that there was a motorcycle ride done shortly after. 
he passed away, reference to like the rides, the motorcycles. I actually didn't know that. Was that true? Oh, definitely true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so no, we I, met. Yeah. Riding motorcycles, we actually met. Right. That wow. way, and uh, a lot of people rode during his funeral. And, right. You know, there was some, some rides afterwards, so. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that definitely rings true. I have to be honest with you, we were trying to throw you for a little bit of a loop there because we're both, you know, a tad skeptical. That's why I sure. brought one object that really didn't have to do with her. So. Right, no, Good I get stuff, it. Man. Good stuff. Awesome, I'm glad yeah. it came through. All right, have a great rest of your day. <laughs> All right. Bye. Yes, that bobblehead really doesn't have anything to do with me, but when he started, like, getting it, I think my walls came down, and I was willing to give him what he needed to validate these certain objects and the, and the situation. All right, back to me. All right, no, back kidding. to you, back to you. <laughs> OK, so I'm curious about the rings. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if we can connect. Let me, let me look. Three, three. OK, um, there's a reference of a woman who dealt with cancer, and, and she's having me bring up cancer, 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 to an extent that would be larger than the traditional sense. And this is coming through as dealing with this basically in two bouts, or the feeling is basically, the way this is being communicated, is having a cancer, and then there's a reference to a spreading. But this is being separated for me in the sense of two separate instances. Do you know of any family members on mom's side of family who would have dealt with the cancer and would have been elderly or older? Because it's, it's one woman, and she's making herself feel unique, but she's saying she dealt with this twice. It was my grandmother. She had lung and bone cancer. OK, thank you. Double cancer. So I'll explain the situation. On one of my younger birthdays, um, my grandmother passed away in a car accident on my birthday. Upstate New York, we have really bad winters. I had my birthday at my uncle's house, which is in the middle of nowhere. And I think the weather condition wasn't great. And a young teenager um, slammed into my grandmother and my godmother's car. And then my grandmother passed away in the hospital later that night. That day, like, forever changed my life and the dynamic with everyone in it. My grandmother kind of was the glue of the family. And then it all forever changed the day after. Just having me reference to your mother, this is kind of interesting. Uh, hmm. For your mother's health, um, I would just encourage her when it comes to what she's putting in her body to be very conscientious. When this woman's coming through, she's having me talk about your mom's mental state and your mom's emotional state. And she's encouraging her to really take time for herself and to focus on her emotional and her mental state. The emphasis that's coming through is a reference of more of what feels like a concern because of how a person would be handling or mishandling their own emotions and feelings. My mom is uh, mentally and physically uh, unstable. I'm sorry. No, so that's, yeah. yeah. I never even think of to bring up my grandmother and that tragic side because I never, this is honestly the first time that I spoke about it publicly. I never speak about that like darker side. But it's interesting because when she's talking about your mom, and then you, she almost kind of views you as like the mom in an interesting way, and your mom is kind of like the child. Mm. It's not a negative, judgmental way, but there's an acceptance and an understanding of how that is. And she's coming through and acknowledging this pride because she's having me bring through this idea and, and acknowledge that she wishes that she were here physically to be able to be there for you and to be the mom presence that you need when you are having to be the mom presence for your own mother. Yeah. And she's proud of you for what you've been able to do for your mom. She's coming through, she's like, it's not easy. And she doesn't blame your mother. And by all means, this isn't, you know, mm -hmm. this isn't blaming her. It's just, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with her, a lot that has to be done. When someone, when a child has to be independent because of a situation, there's almost a feeling of an awareness of that, of like, oh. Let's just say I was getting myself ready for kindergarten every morning. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. It's, uh, yeah, when my grandmother passed, I, the roles reversed. You've made them so proud by doing these things and taking the mature route. And when it's easy to just throw in the towel when it comes to your relationship with your mom, they're proud of you for being able to still be there. Well, and I wanted to throw it in a bunch of times. <laughs> I'm sure they know. It's a lot to take in. No, I don't, no. <laughs> this is what I wanted, though. I Good. wanted the validation 
because of who I am and being in the public eye. No, I've never talked about my mom or my mom's side. So when I meet mediums, they always go for the grandmother that passed away when I was filming. They always oh. go for the my dad's mom, right. who lived a wonderful, healthy life. But I think it's because they can Google that. I see. So nothing has ever been talked about my mother or my grandmother uh, publicly. Right. So you got it. Those are the details that I believe if a medium is being authentic, they'll be able to bring through. Yep. Yeah, that's the goal. Roger, my husband always says, you're, you're your mother's mother. And for Tyler to say that, like that was crazy because there's only one other person in this world that says that to me, and that's Roger. What Tyler said kind of nailed it. Look, I recognize you when I walked in, but I leave this reading today feeling like I know so much more about you thank than I could you. ever even imagine. And I, my respect for you is just massive. So thank you for sharing that and being open about that. Thank you for being true to who you really are. Oh, of course. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. you changed two skeptics, so oh, good. I've got to give it to you. Say, I don't want you to leave. You are so sweet. But I know you're busy. Oh, thank you. I would say Tyler's the real deal, yes. He's the first time to take something, to take something from two people, me and my husband, and validate them. And to never have that before, never have that experience before, it, like I said, could possibly be a game changer, life changing um, for me and my husband. I still have to digest it because it's never happened before. Never, I never thought it could. Oh my God, I was so, I was a non-believer. And I don't know how to react now that I believe. So I can't wait to call my husband and uh, yeah, know that there's something out there, that, they're, that they are with us and proud of us, as long as you're a good person, so, okay.